Hello, friends and artists. I am so happy to be here with you today talking about the wonderful folk artist, self-trained folk artist, who started making art when she was 50 and made an incredible amount of art for the next 50 years, Miss Clementine Hunter. Um, so one of the things that I love about her work is how she um, drew pictures of what happened in her everyday life, kind of like Faith Ringgold. But like Faith Ringgold would draw, draw things about like her dreams, but Clementine drew things about what was going on around her. So people hanging up laundry, um, people um, brushing or doing hair, um, this one really struck me because I, uh, during the pandemic, uh, what with coronavirus, I've cut my hair several times. And so this would be a scene uh, that maybe I would do with my husband. Um, I love this one because it's a, um, it's a house with the yard around the house and then another yard in another part of the house. And I just, with another house next door. And I love how it's separated by a fence. Um, people, uh, using like going fishing, you know, things that they, people do every day, people on their way to work. So we're going to draw an outside scene today, something that happens outside that you might do a lot of, um, inspired by Clementine Hunter. Um, so a couple of those uh, pieces were held vertically. I'm going to hold um, my, uh, those were the ones that kind of had different things happening in each one. But I'm going to go ahead and hold my, um, my paper to the side. And then I'm just going to start um, with a horizon line. And I'm going to draw a horizon line so I know where the sky meets the ground. And I'm just going to draw it lightly. So remember, you can pause the video at any point um, to do this. Um, and then I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to have it outside of my house. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my house or part of my house. Now, sometimes when people draw houses, uh, they draw a square or a rectangle, which is how I started, and then they draw a triangle on top. If your house looks like this from the front, my house looks like that from the side, and from the front I see the roof. So I just drew a trapezoid on top, and then my door is over here to the right, and I've got two windows next to it. And I've got three windows upstairs. And we have a fireplace kind of in the middle of our house. So I'm drawing lightly with my pencil. Um, so that I can easily erase because I didn't want my house and maybe I would want the horizon line a little higher on my house actually. behind my house, I should say. Okay. Now we have a big tree over here and I love how, so I'm just gonna draw the bottom of my tree. I'm gonna add in some lines for the roots and I'm gonna go ahead and do like the classic old, you know, bush on top of a tree, <laughs> on top of a rectangle that's kind of how Clementine Hunter painted. She painted very simply and kind of does the same things that we all do as artists when we're first learning to draw. I mean, later we learn to draw trees in different ways, like Mr. Gustav Klimt. Um, but so I have a house and I have a tree and I've got my yard and we've got a, um, a like a porch above our front door. Oh, and I've got one of those doors that has a window on the top. I'm not going to draw all the panes of the window. I think I'll just draw the window and all of our 
windows upstairs have paint. We also have shutters on our house, so I should probably draw those. Do you have shutters on your house? I have shutters on my house. They don't actually work, which I find kind of annoying. I feel like if you're going to have a shutter on the house, but they do make it look pretty. So I hope you're thinking about what your house looks like and drawing your house. Once we get our house drawn, then we're going to think about how Clementine Hunter did outside scenes. So I want you to start thinking while you're drawing about while you're drawing your house about what what might happen outside your house. We have window boxes under our front window, so I'm going to go ahead and draw those. Now I'm not going to draw in every detail. Like we have a whole bunch of bushes here. I will draw in. We've got a path that leads to our front door and our driveway is over here. Um, but I, I'm not going to draw every little thing in our house. Uh, like I have a bench here. I'm not going to draw the bench because they ran out of space. Um, I'm not going to draw all the bushes in front of our house um, because I want the focus to be on what is happening in the yard, what's happening outside of your house, what's something that typically happens outside of your house. Now, if I had made a winter tree, um, maybe it's building a snowman. And if, and if I wanted to make a winter tree, a bear tree, um, remember there's a great technique for drawing a tree and it's with a Y technique. And so you start with a letter Y. So if you're interested in doing that, you certainly could. And then you turn each of the branches into Ys and then you add another branch. Okay, so if you wanted to make, if you have a tree in front of your yard and you wanted to add a winter tree because you want to do building a snowman, um, you can draw a winter tree that way or you could draw an evergreen tree. And then I just thicken up the trunk of the tree a little and I thicken up the branches a little. And I've got a fabulous tree. Now, Cara, uh, Clementine Hunter did not have that many winter trees because uh, I don't think trees uh, where she was were losing a lot of leaves. Like she, I didn't see a lot of winter scenes because she lives so far south. But if you wanted to draw a winter tree, pause the video and draw a winter tree the way I just did, just by adding letter Ys onto your tree, starting with one Y and then adding more Ys. You can do that. But back to my good old bush on top of a rectangle tree. All right, so now in my front yard, I'm starting to think about, well, what happens in my front yard? I know that in the fall, which we just had, um, the leaves fall out of trees. So I, when I'm painting this or coloring this in, I might make it a fall leaf tree. And what happens in the fall when the leaves are falling? We make big piles of leaves. And who makes the big piles of leaves? Well, in our house, we all do, but probably it's mostly my husband, I will admit. So maybe I draw my husband over here with a rake. Now, don't get stressed out about drawing people because I'm going to show you some little tips. All right, so I'm going to start with the body. And I'm just going to go ahead and Carol, uh, Clementine, keep calling her Clarence, uh, Caroline, but Clementine Hunter, uh, was very simple with her shape. So I'm going to draw a rectangle for the body and a rectangle for the arm. And I'm going to draw another couple of rectangles for legs. And I'll draw a head. And my husband always wears a hat, so I'll draw a little hat. I'm not going to wear and I'll draw his hand here. I'm just going to draw circles for hands. And I'll draw his big old feet. Don't tell him I said they were big old feet. I just kind of made him look like Frankenstein, but don't tell him that. Um, so I'm going to draw a body, and maybe I could do a body in motion doing something, but I'm, I'm just going to have him waiting with the rake in his hand because I'm going to have something else happening in my scene. I'm going to have my daughters jumping into a pile of leaves. So maybe I'll have one, and maybe let's see. There's my husband's face. Oh, no. What's happening? Um, so maybe I'll have one daughter sitting up in the leaves and my daughter with long hair. Actually, she doesn't have bangs. I'll draw her hair on here. 
And she's going, woohoo, we're in the leaves. <laughs> Big smile on her face. Um, and then maybe my other daughter is running up to jump. Maybe I have her jumping in. And so again, I'll draw the rectangle body. And I want her legs bent like she's jumping. So I'll make just two lines there, right? But then I'll turn them into shapes. So I made like an upside down L and I turned it into a shape. And then I'll add her arm and she's, you know, jumping in. I'll erase that leaf. Big fun jumping into our piles of leaves. Maybe she's got a striped shirt on. So you are learning all about the wonderful artist um, Clementine Hunter. And I have shown you today how you can, maybe he's got a shirt under a shirt, um, how you can um, use how you can draw your house or an important building to you. Maybe it's your school. Maybe you draw a picture of what's happening at your school. Um, so you could draw a school. Remember when you're done to color it in because Clementine Hunter was very colorful. So you'd want to keep your crayons nearby and color it in. Um, if when you're coloring, it's like, wow, this is a lot to color in. Remember, you can always get some paints. You could, um, uh, because of wax resist, you can paint right on top of what you've colored in and it'll, the water will just run off. Or you could paint the whole thing too. It's up to you. you paint every little part of it. Anyway, I hope you have fun drawing an outside scene um, inspired by Clementine Hunter today. Happy art making, friends. Can't wait to see what you draw outside of your building.